Hello everyone, my name is Amal Dev PJ and I am an assistant professor of English literature from Vimla College Trishul. And today I am doing this video to explain the concept of power to my students. So for those who have come to have a very elaborate and nuanced discussion on the concept of power, this is not for you but rather this is for the first semester undergraduate students of English literature who are just entering the realm of literary studies and who are just being acquainted to notions like ideology and power. So I am going to make it as simple as possible because uh, these students have just from, come from schools and uh, they probably do not have that deep an understanding of literary studies and the complex concepts that are involved in the pursuit of literature. So I'll, I'll try to make it as easy as possible for them. Uh, so uh, for the others, bear with me. If you're interested, you can continue watching. But uh, if you think that this is not worth your time, you can skip it. Okay. So first of all, uh, let's try to understand what the word power means. You must have heard the word power in a lot of contexts, especially if you have studied physics in school, of course. Uh, the word must have came to your ears uh, a lot of times and you must have confused the notion of power and those formulas and all. But now that you come to the realm of literary studies, why should the word power be there? We have also heard the word power being used in many other contexts like uh, uh, somebody is applying a kind of suppressive force onto another individual. We have understood that basic uh, notion of power. Uh, he's a very powerful person. What does that mean? He or she is a very powerful person or uh, they are a very powerful community. What does that mean? Try to think of it. Uh, we'll try to form a kind of definition of power. Not a very uh, standard textbook-like definition but something that would help you understand the notion slightly better. So, power is nothing but the ability to induce action or thought in others. That is how I'd like to define power. This is not a text textbook definition. This is a definition which will help you understand power in an everyday context. So the ability to induce action or thought in others. How can you do that? Have you done that before? You have actually. Has it happened that uh, at some point you wanted something and uh, from your parents and they didn't agree to it and you probably uh, did a bit of drama, you probably cried and uh, you probably you know, blurted out some cinematic dialogue and eventually uh, they did it for you or they bought it for you. Has that happened? In that context, you are applying power on your parents. That is, uh, you were in making them do some kind of action or making them think in a direction which is favorable for you. So you were applying power to them. So most of the time when we understand or when we think of the word power, we think of it in a very negative way. But rather, we do not realize the fact that power is something that is omnipresent in our everyday lives. We human beings use power in probably almost every single situation in our lives. For example, uh, imagine that you woke up this morning mo uh, this morning, and uh, you started dressing up for college, which is not happening now, of course, because of the pandemic. But in a usual scenario, imagine that you uh, wake up, or probably this is your first day in college and you're planning to come to college. So what do you do? You make sure that you choose the best clothing that you have from your wardrobe. So even if you don't have that many clothing, you make sure that you're choosing the best uh, uh, attire that you have and you probably follow slightly of whatever the current trends are happening around and you style yourself a bit. And when you meet uh, people for the first time, uh, you probably use slightly sophisticated language or try to present yourself in a... Um, better manner than you usually are. That must be what you do. When a teacher comes to your class, you will be like very disciplined and you'll be smiling and you'll be looking at them very curiously. Uh, why are you doing that? Of course, there is no conscious intention there, but uh, I would say that uh, you are in a way implying a sort of power there. That is, by representing yourself in a particular way. That uh, by dressing up in a particular way, by uh, talking in a particular manner or by using certain kinds of words or certain kinds of expressions and gestures or talking to somebody in a particular manner, you are actually representing yourself. You are actually performing in a way so that you make an impact on another person. That is, you induce certain thoughts in them uh, in a particular direction so that they may think that he or she is a very stylish person or he or she is a very, uh, what to say, subtle and uh, deep person. So you, every time you talk to somebody or you are even standing in a crowd, you are presenting yourself in a way so that you can mark yourself in that context. You are trying to tell the world that I am such and such a person. You are trying to impose power on the world. Understand? So power can be attained in many ways. 
it need not be this was a very simple and silly example that i gave that how you tried to present yourself to the world so that you can uh, mark yourself in a particular context and say that i am such and such a person why do you want to say that because uh, being marked as such and such a person might give you certain privileges that is a very significant word when it comes to power privileges that is if you belong to a certain sect of people or if you belong to a certain category of people class of people there are certain privileges that you might get so you are in a way craving for those privileges if somebody sees that you are a person who communicates really well in english there is a certain kind of power that you attain in many contexts but uh, if you are a person who's uh, really well dressed there is a certain um, category to which you might be associated to which might give you a certain kind of privilege in certain places uh, for instance when i first joined college uh, uh, my friends used to ask me why do you actually uh, come in like very uh, uh, formal attire and you you must be you, you are always uh, tucking in your shirt and uh, um, you know dressing up very prim and proper why do you do that you you should we never seen you do that before in college or the thing is uh, that's also uh, in a way a uh, kind of Uh, imposing power that is I, i i was a very young teacher i didn't look that mature and when i came into class uh, the students uh, most of the time did not take me that seriously so in in a society there is a certain kind of understanding about clothing uh, there there are certain common norms and uh, ideas that have been fed into our minds and uh, sort of started seeming like natural uh, the thing is in most of the movies you must have seen uh, somebody uh, imagine that there is a scene where uh, somebody is in the hospital in a very critical situation and the doctor comes out and tells the you know, relatives or the friends of that patient that okay he is in a very critical situation but we are trying our best so imagine in this context most of the time the doctor is uh, dressed in formal clothing imagine that the doctor has uh, uh, three metallic studs here and a tattoo here uh, probably and a tattoo uh, all the way through his arm uh, we might slightly feel shocked right so there are certain stereotypes about clothing and uh, uh, certain common sensical notions that have been concretized in our minds about clothing and uh, uh, the dignity of people this may not be right because a uh, completely uh, you know stylishly dressed person can be a very intelligent and deep person but there are certain common sensical notions that have been fed into our minds and it seems like na- seem like they seem like natural to us so when i dress up very formally i am actually telling the students that i belong to this category which i may not actually but i am trying to present myself so that uh, uh, you know i can position myself somewhere in their minds so that uh, i may claim a certain kind of authority through my clothing so again there is my will for power there i am longing or i am trying to impose a certain kind of power there even students might do it don't think that uh, power only operates from the top to the bottom imagine that in our traditional understanding of teaching learning uh, in olden times the notion was the teacher was superior and the student was inferior and most of the time it was uh, uh, the knowledge came from there to here from the teacher to students but nowadays that notion has changed uh, it's a very participatory activity teaching us so if the teacher has certain amounts of power the students are also given certain kinds of power that is they can question what the teacher is saying or they can make suggestions in uh, or request changes in the way the teacher is conveying an idea so again the students have a kind of power there so power is omnipresent in the society i'll give you one more example imagine that you have a one or two year old child or probably a six month old baby even uh, even that child has the ability to exert power that is if a baby cries a certain kind of a thought or action will be induced in the parents if a baby keeps on crying the parents would be very disturbed and they will do as many things as possible to pacify the child so that baby by crying is actually imposing power on the parents so uh, see power is omnipresent everywhere we can imagine any kind of situation uh, around you and you can see power at work now there are certain things that you as a student are expected to do you might have to stand up in certain colleges you might have to stand up and uh, respect the teacher when the teacher enters not necessarily in all colleges but in most of the colleges the system is followed so it again is a way of uh, communicating power power relations that is uh, the teacher is an important figure here so he is being being paid reverence there so that is a gesture which in a way communicates a certain amount of power there and uh, power can be uh, you know power can reflect through many things that is there is economic power for example if somebody has no money 
they can consume a lot of things and they can enjoy a lot of privileges like uh, better traveling possibilities better accommodation possibilities better food better access to education so money actually allows our economic capability allows certain kinds of privileges for certain people so economic power there and uh, then there is biopower it's again a very significant concept uh, that is actually somebody can impose power on your body even not the physical force but despite uh, even uh, without all that somebody can uh, enforce power on you how imagine that there is a punching system in an office so what happens there an individual has to be physically present there in the office at a certain particular point of time so that uh, he can get his uh, draw his salary for that day so that system there that uh, biometric system there is assuring that this person is physically present there so even that mechanism uh, is actually uh, enforcing a certain kind of power on that individual so see it's not, it need not even be individuals that is exerting power on uh, people it's it's actually a system uh, that is exerting power there so again political power now if somebody is in the ruling party there are many key decisions that uh, that individual or that uh, group of individuals can make and it can influence the lives of thousands and millions so that is political power economic power and the power based on class uh, or caste even in many communities uh, there are uh, caste systems prevalent and certain uh, communities are given more privileges than the other community uh in olden times we know that even uh, walking on the public roads was a privilege uh, only which uh, was there for the upper caste so again power based on caste or even race now even today with all with even with all these developments happening all this progress happening we have seen racism being exercised in many places that is uh, uh, people being discriminated and tormented on the basis of color so again uh, there uh, color becomes a way of uh, access to power to some people uh, lack uh, it, the same color becomes a way of uh, you know not giving power to some people so again all these things you can uh, bring into notice bio power economic power political power so i hope that the concept of power is clear now i am coming to uh, one of the most significant uh, ideas about power the relationship between knowledge and power that is uh, again uh, if you have a sir, have a kind of a very expert knowledge about something you can actually uh, make another person uh, do many things in the sense uh, i'll tell you a very simple example uh, your parents might be very rich people and uh, they might be in very high positions of the society but imagine that uh, probably a fan in your household is not working so then you have to call an electrician and uh, when the electrician comes uh, he or she will be probably uh, like uh, be treated very well because uh, that problem needs to be resolved so the electrician's knowledge on how to resolve the problem with the fan is actually becoming a power to him his skill of uh, fixing the electronic goods is actually becoming a source of power there even very uh, what to say people of very high positions would have to depend on that electrician and they would have to treat this electrician well so that they could have their fan fixed so knowledge or skill becomes a source of power there now imagine that i am somebody who who is very well versed in the concept of literary theory so what will happen most of the academic people will invite me for lectures and listen to my ideas so being aware of certain things being having the in depth knowledge about certain things also gives me a certain kind of power right now uh, again in our societies at times age becomes a factor of a power we have to listen to the elders they have the ability to make us do things or make us think in certain directions so they also have some kind of power on the basis of age so i hope this notion of power is clear to you it might be slightly complicated but i have i have tried to make it as simple as possible so power is nothing but the ability to induce a certain kind of action or thought uh, or some directions of thought in in others so whenever somebody is trying to say that i am such a person they are trying to make us think that uh, uh, by their notion of themselves that is i am a very nice person or i am a very honest person so i am trying to tell the other person that uh, uh, you have to trust me or i am trying to induce certain thoughts in the other person i am trying to impose power on that person by presenting myself as such and such a person so i hope this notion is clear so remember that uh, this is not a very negative thing as such but rather this is something that is everywhere in our everyday life we uh, this is there's a power play 
in our everyday con uh, conduct there is a power play so understand this notion that power is something that is omnipresent everywhere and it's not something deeply theoretical but rather something that is very closely associated with our lives so i hope this is clear whatever doubts you have you can post in the comments in the google classroom or for the general public you can post your questions and queries in the uh, youtube comments so i hope the concept is clear further elaborations will be do done in the coming videos for the time being but for the time being i'll conclude thank you for listening i hope you guys are keeping safe and well thank you